everyone, and happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to the Bob Stoops app. I'm Brad McMullen, along with Hall of Fame football coach Bob Stoops. And the big story on this Thanksgiving week, the opening at the University of Florida. And someone that knows all too well about the University of Florida because he won a national title there as a defensive coordinator is Bob Stoops. And coach, your name has been linked to this job yet again, and this has happened multiple times throughout the years. This is a great job, obviously, available in Gainesville. But even in Vegas, Las Vegas, you are the number one voting candidate to take that job. Your thoughts on the Florida Gators opening? Well, that didn't take long for you to get right to the point, <laughs> did it, Brad? But uh, <laughs> but uh, listen, happy Thanksgiving weekend to everybody. Hopefully everybody has a safe and fun weekend with the family. Um, you know, that. Uh, first of all, it's a great job. Uh, but I'll, I'll start off by saying I'm very happy with where I'm at in my life right now, what I'm doing, um, all the different vi business ventures along with being on Fox, Big Noon Kickoff. Uh, still very interested and love watching my son play, and uh, he's got another year or two depending. So, so, so many things just, again, I'm in a great space right now, so it isn't something that I'm looking to do. Um, you know, but it, it's a great job. Uh, I don't think there's any question it's the number one job in the state of Florida. Uh, I've always believed it's the number one job in the SEC, you know, just from my time with Steve Spurrier at the University of Florida at that time. Boy, Coach Spurrier really had it going for, for a good while there and uh, a lot of great players, great recruiting, all of it together, great fan support, administration, all of it together is a, is a great job. So, uh, but again, where I'm at in my life right now, I'm, I'm really happy with, with the way it's all going. Uh, and there's also, you know, I say this about Florida, it's a program that's won at a high level for a long, long time. What do they need to do? What type of coach should they be going after? You know, it's hard to say and have it not being there. How, how could it have failed to this point right now? It's hard to believe. Um, when you look at Steve Spurrier with the national championship, played for another, Urban Meyer won two of them, won against us, sadly. But, uh, you know, I, I think usually when, when things are happening this way, it's a cultural thing. And to me, that's the head coach's job to build the culture along with his assistant coaches, leaders on the team to accept how we're going to, what our culture is going to be, how we're going to work, how we're going to compete. And for whatever reason, right now, it just seems like there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, again, it's, it, it wouldn't be right for me to say why when where I'm not sitting there in the middle of it. So I, I, I can't say why, but usually when people, a great program like that is struggling, has most to do with the culture. And, and that's everybody, mm -hmm. players, coaches. And your job as a head coach is to build that culture, first and foremost. If you were the head coach of Florida, if you took that job, what would you do to turn it around? Again, uh, you, to me, it's hiring great coaches, finding your leaders, getting them to believe in you and trust you, and, and start you know, with building that culture. And that's a work ethic in the out of season, an attitude, a, a commitment to the program, all of it. To me, that's what, you know, where it has to begin. And one thing you used to say is it's also addition by subtraction. Sometimes you might have to move some players on. Well, I sold you that. Within yeah. a week of having the job, I, Lou Holtz called me. We were talking. I called Coach Holtz. And he said, Bobby, there's three ways to build your program. Develop what you got, recruit, and eliminate. Mm. There's some guys that are pulling away from the team and, and bringing you down. You got to let them go. doesn't matter who they are. And, uh, and start the rebuild that way. And in today's world, it's easier to rebuild with the transfer portal. You get some guys that are really quality players, maybe at some other schools that aren't, you know, at the top of the pecking order when you when you look at Florida, that all of a sudden come in and can really interject a lot of toughness and leadership and work ethic that maybe they're missing. Yeah, and I think there's two key things that allow somebody to turn a program around faster today than in years past. The transfer portal number one in NIL. So you can go and you can really, you know, bring some people in and say, hey, we're willing to invest. We have a business community that's willing to invest to have you here. Exactly. It can change it. And of course, the reason why there is an opening at the University of Florida, they're not in the top 10 of the college football playoff. They're not even in the top 25. Let's talk about this new top 10 ranking that came out on Tuesday night. Georgia, number one, no surprise. Ohio State, who has played very, very well. 
has jumped ahead of Alabama. Alabama at number three. Cincinnati now in the top four at number four. Michigan at number five. Notre Dame number six. uh, Oklahoma State seven. Baylor eight. Ole Miss nine. And Oklahoma ten. Your thoughts on those new rankings? Yeah, it it all makes sense. Um, In my personal ranking, I had Oklahoma State four. Uh, just because of their quality went uh, over Baylor. And uh, they have a similar resume to Ohio State. Now, Ohio State has been so explosive in the last game, beating Michigan State so bad, I would have put them up ahead of Oklahoma State as well. But I got Oklahoma State right there with everybody at four, in my opinion, because of the quality wins. And they've won in really solid, good fashion. Uh, heck of a game this week, which you know we've talked about with, with Oklahoma. My opinion is if Oklahoma and or Oklahoma State can run the table, they'll be in the top four. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, Notre Dame without a without a conference, cha- I guess they have the ACC championship game. Is but that but right? not this year. They're not, not playing year. in it. No, okay. they're not playing. All right. In it. Well, then that that may hurt them in the long run, not having an extra an extra point. Cincinnati's a really good football team. I guess I'm always you know, skeptical of the strength of schedule. I know they have the quality good win against Notre Dame, which is a great win, and, and they're a really good football team. I just I just always feel that if you have to play in a, one of these conferences you, you, every single week, that, that team can beat you for the most part. Not, yeah. Some of them are, you know, a little bit down. But so, uh, but anyway, I, I think it's a solid ranking, and, and I think everybody in that top 10 still has a legitimate shot. Yeah, and of course, there's going to be a lot of interesting things to happen this weekend as you're going to have Michigan and Ohio State play. I mean, it, that's going to be a big one. Great, great game. And then, and then you also got uh, Houston going to play Cincinnati in, in their championship game, yep. and Houston's look fantastic. So a lot can happen, but you, Michigan State, or, uh, Michigan-Ohio State's a great game. Who do you think is going to win that one? I'd really like to say Michigan, but Ohio State, it's an embarrassment of riches on offense. Those mm-hmm. three receivers are so hard to deal with. But Michigan got a heck of a secondary and a heck of a defense. They're two and three in about every single defensive category. So they've been solid all year. They got two great rushers, uh, Aiden Hutchinson and uh, and um, Ojibo. Ojibo, yeah. I believe is the right way to say it. Each of them have 10 sacks. For Michigan, yeah. so if they can get pressure to Stroud with that secondary, it's going to give them and eliminate some of those huge plays they're used to getting. They're going to have a real chance, and I, I think too, Michigan has a really strong run game. If they can stay on the field, eat up some clock, limit the number of possessions Ohio State does, you know, has, then they'll have a chance. I think similar to how some people have have played OU this year and played us tight. Yeah. You know, by eating up the clock, picking up some third and downs and, and moving the chains, uh, then they'll have a real chance. But uh, it's just going to be hard. Uh, Ohio State's played better on defense, which the early part of the year, they were really bad on defense. And I, you got to give them their whole coaching staff credit. They've really flipped that. Yep. Right now they're playing excellent defense. I think, I don't know, the last four or five games, they're, you know, up 15 or less points a game they're giving up. So they've been really solid. Tough to run the football on, but again, Michigan runs it well. So that's going to be a good matchup to see how it works. And the secondary of Michigan against explosive passing game of Ohio State. Going to be a heck of a game. Got to love rivalry week. Another big rivalry game, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. This is the Egg Bowl. And if you're in the Magnolia State, this is the Super Bowl. And both of these teams are really, really good this year. They are, and, and fun to watch. Obviously, each can score in a in a minute, uh, you know, explosive plays by Ole Miss, run and pass, and then, uh, you know, Coach Leach and, and Mississippi State, the ability to throw the football. Heck, they came back on Auburn and, what, had yep. 35 unanswered points maybe yep. in the second half. So, uh, always fun to watch and uh, be rooting for our former coaches. Steve Spurrier Jr. coaches the receivers there and Mike Leach, of course, being the head coach, so uh, that'll be fun to watch. Do you think State can upset Ole Miss? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, the way they came back and, and beat Auburn, you know, I, I, Auburn was a good football team at the time when they beat them. So, um, so oh, yeah, I, I think they can beat them for sure. All right, we talk extensively about Bedlam, and you can watch that video here inside the app. But real quickly, we'll touch on that game. The Sooners, an underdog playing in Stillwater. They have to win this game 
to play in the Big 12 championship. And a little bit of bulletin board material from a certain player at Oklahoma State that said the Cowboys would whoop the blank out of the Sooners. I'm sure the Sooners have heard the quote. Yeah, quotes don't matter. And uh, <laughs> and I don't think uh, any of the OU players need a quote to get them fired up knowing what's at stake. I'll say this, normally OU has played great in these situations. I don't mean just with Oklahoma State, but when our back's against the wall, going away from home in a big stadium, in a big environment, we seem to rise uh, to the occasion in those, in those instances for the most part. It kind of gives us energy, knowing, knowing what the, the crowd's going to be like. So I, I know OU will, will embrace that situation and hopefully be at their best. It's going to be a heck of a game. Uh, you know, some matchups there uh, will be, you know, in my opinion, OU's top of the league in most offensive categories and number one in every defensive category is o Oklahoma State. So can OU stay on the field, be patient, run the ball, take intermediate short throws when they're there, stay in front of the change, stay in third and shorts and third and, and mediums as opposed to getting in third and long very much because Oklahoma State does a great job with sacks, putting you in long yardages. Their third down defense is really good. So that'll be a big part of it. And then on the other side, OU's defense, I believe, in the last few weeks has really played well, yes. played great game last week against Iowa State. Can they do the same thing and really limit the run game, uh, eliminate Tay Martin with some deep throws? You know, and uh, Spencer Sanders, too, a big part of that run game. He's a really quality runner when he does. So if, if OU can really control the run game uh, and put them in third and long, hmm. I think then then they've got a real chance. And, and uh, But it's, I, I think it's going to be a heck of a game. Yeah, not often the Oklahoma Sooners find themselves as an underdog, especially as a top-10 team with 10 wins. But that's exactly what it will be on Saturday night. And historically speaking, I hope Mike Gundy is wrong. He said he believes this will be the last time the Sooners will play in Stillwater. That's kind of sad to even hear that. Yeah, but who knows? I mean, uh, you, we'll see where it goes. I know this, uh, you know, it's usually a big payday for them. Yeah. When we're going to sell out every time we're, we're there and what a big game and marquee game for TV, for sellout crowds, all of that. And moving forward, I know what the teams in the SEC that will be filling our stadium We'll be in pretty good shape, uh, yeah. regardless. But in the end, we'll see where it goes. And if they don't, you know, you know, if it doesn't work, we don't play anymore. So be it, you know. But uh, uh, it's been it's been a, a fun and exciting rivalry, and this game's going to be fantastic. Uh, can't wait for it, like everybody. I'm, I feel like I'm coaching it. I'm I'm nervous, <laughs> you know. Just for I guess for the anticipation of it, mm -hmm. you know, you just want it to come. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Boy, some <laughs> yeah. great great games. Sit back. Fill up on some turkey and enjoy the holiday and get ready for some great college football. And don't forget, you can enter to win to have lunch with Coach Stoops right here inside the mobile app. And for the latest videos, just tap on our video link. For Hall of Fame football coach Bob Stoops, I'm Brad McMullen wishing you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.